Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel S2T. In today's show, Computer Wednesday, we're gonna talk about Wi-Fi Dabba. So let's dive right into it. Well, first we have to understand what the heck we are talking about. So we are talking about a new internet service provider and it's a startup in Bangalore, basically Silicon Valley of India. And uh, their selling point is they're gonna give you cheap and fast internet. That's kind of obvious, uh, but they're gonna give it using uh, basically Wi-Fi. So we have uh, multiple service provider right now. So we have 4G providers, we have fiber providers. Uh, these people want to do something interesting and they want to use Wi-Fi to provide internet anywhere. So this is what we are talking about. So how the heck they're gonna do it? Now, they're gonna take internet same way if every Tom, Dick and Harry, every other company does that. Like they will take fiber from somewhere. Uh, generally, each country has their own uh, governmental body that deals with the undersea fiber cable to communicating to private companies. And they're gonna take the fiber from there. And then from that central connection, they're gonna distribute it. Now, that's where your cost starts to uh, you know rise up because once you have established that, Again, how the heck you're gonna get your product to the end customer? So they're gonna use Node. Now, uh, Getting connection to one point is super easy, but how the heck you distribute it among a whole city and a city city as large as Bangalore, which is quite huge. It's like that's the difficult part. So uh, they are utilizing laser communication. That is what is called free space optical communication. So instead of laying down fiber from uh, their central receiving backbone to everywhere, they are just relying on uh, basically high mobile towers and they're going to use laser communication to distribute the connection. That's why they are cutting out the middleman. Basically uh, laying down fiber, specifically underground, is very expensive. On top of that it requires a lot of uh, basically red tape to go through because again you have to take permits and per permits and all that those are very expensive and tedious also so they are bypassing that so they only receive internet from let's say outside a town where it's super cheap and effective they get the connection there from their like from their backbone to distribution everywhere they utilize laser communication now from that point basically the, let's say mobile uh, you have a mobile top tower there they're gonna have cable normal uh, ethernet cable and they're gonna those ethernet cable will connect to basically wi-fi Dabba, aka access point now these access point will allow you to receive the communication now uh, how the heck you gonna ha use this basically these access point in the phase one will be only there where people have lot large gatherings basically uh, coffee shops things of that way and now in india instead of coffee shops we have again we have coffee shops it's just that we have more chai walas there uh, basically tea shops so all these tea shops are kind of a very big gathering group basically people uh, in, during evening break time in offices they gather there like like you can have like even a small tea shop could have like 20 30 people gathering there every day, every day reliably as long as it's a working day so the idea is these access point would be there in the first place it has already been done so and there you can from the tea shop uh, seller you're gonna buy uh, coupons so to say you're gonna have a two rupee coupon ten rupee uh, twenty rupee and these coupon would be valid for one day now the interesting part is even though these coupon you are buying from one tiwala let's say you do uh, you know in the morning you bought it you used your one tiwala and you did the work you came home there's a tiwala near you which also has the service the data will be still valid the data has a time limit but not a location limit basically it's not like oh you bought it from here use it here it's like uh, as long as you are in a range use it so uh, that's the how uh, all of those things was because they are bypassing uh, basically middle fiber run middle mile problem as is classified uh, they are reducing their cost drastically because fiber runs are expensive so bypassing that saves them a lot of money they can achieve things that like you know 10 gbps connection from point a to point b on a fraction of a cost so that's how they are um, you know that's their business model so to say now i have seen many isps and i'm reasonably sure you must have also seen there are big isp that are like you know granddaddy that exploit you to the end then you have smaller isp that tries to do their best but they are not that good and uh, this company is in that category it's a small isp however uh, they are doing something differently because when uh, many times i even in my small town there are like two three small isps but they are very dense so to say like they just know okay i'm gonna get the connection from this service provider and i'm gonna distribute it amongst you and they buy the products from let's say dealing uh, Cisco or, or whatever have you and they distribute it to the customer everything is fine and dead but they have no control over the quality uh, service and all that anything like that basically if you are not happy with the router they can't help you uh, if you are not happy with the how the heck uh, you know how stable the connection is or it keeps dropping off they cannot do anything about it so those reality affects it and uh, this company before starting they did a lot of research they're like they sat down and they're like let's let's see why the heck ISPs are so expensive in the first place and many of the costs were not only from physical point 
basically uh, you know laying down fibers or giving the fiber to the last mile per customer that was also expensive uh, those add up lot of cost because they have to rely on dlink or uh, cisco or whoever is companies providing the equipment on both end basically customer end or your end you have to pay them a lot of money and these commercial grade equipments they are ludicrously expensive so this company took a completely different approach. It's like from node to access point to operating system on those access point, everything will be developed in-house. It's almost like SpaceX kind of a vertical. Uh, everything should be done in one roof. So they, they started out small and humble with a Raspberry Pi and a USB 4G backups stuff with a lithium ion battery backups and all that. They started small, but they kept developing it. And uh, the reality they had is like there are routers, they are generally sold in thick characters. You have a, a cheap router, which is like, OK, it's like it works, but useless then you have a medium range which is like okay but not that great because it cannot handle too many clients it's very good for a few people but not handle like you know 20 30 clients then you have super expensive art. they want performance of super expensive art but without it being super expensive so they started developing their own let that sink in developing their own hardware so again they went to qualcomm they got the chips their system on chip basically and then they developed the whole ecosystem around it so that is the completely different of this isp they're not just like okay i'm gonna buy a router and i'm gonna distribute it no they it's not like there are many internet servers which rely on ubiquitous uh, equipments they receive internet point-to-point -point communication and then distribute in locally it has been done there are many people do. heck there is one youtuber who is doing that so it's normal but uh, doing it in this way where they are like okay we're gonna figure out how the heck this operating system works we're gonna uh, make, distribute the whole damn thing and control it ourselves that is a very big gamble because again if customer has an issue with a router you cannot just call someone and be like okay can you take care of this no you have to solve it now there are benefits of that because the, even from day one they are distributing virtual provide uh, private network from day one because they are writing the operating system themselves these sort of features are inbuilt and uh, to make sure uh, the whole architecture is simplified that's the whole deal here they are not selling to you they are selling to a tea shop near you they are selling to a like you know bus stop near, near you so doing this way near you you get the connection but without uh, them actually distributing hundreds of the connection because hundreds of individual connections are very expensive uh, rather than providing in some centralized place so they have already done, done that they are already making some profit out of it it's not like they are swimming in money but they are making profit out of it which is a very big deal for a business and to make sure let's say once they have like you know large communications of this basically you can have large bus stop where they can have five six access point all those access points are designed with a mesh network and that is why they needed to control the operating system because operating systems uh, control like you have you can buy cisco mesh network you can buy alienware uh, networks all those companies do mesh network but how the heck they do it they will not tell you that's the proprietary magic sauce so to say so they had to develop it like yeah you know we're not gonna trust you we're gonna develop our own so that's what they are doing and it is quite amazing and uh, the reason uh, their development is actually so cheap uh, like uh, the fact that they are actually making profit is because the whole uh, pipeline is very simple they are like okay we have 5000 customers we are gonna only expand to 5000 customers they are not gonna be like you know we have to lay down fibers everywhere which geo fiber was biggest issue it's like uh, geo fiber is a very good service product problem is they are expensive as hell why because they lay down the fiber everywhere even though people are not get taking the connection so it has like hundreds of boxes uh, that can give hundreds of connections like each box has 24 connection easily and uh, they do not have that many people like each box barely has one cable going and most of the boxes are empty but they had to eat up that cost so that cost comes from us the cost is per month is very expensive this puppy they do not have to do it's like okay only in this area this tea shop has enough traffic enough people are utilizing their mobile phones then they are like okay we're gonna have one laser receiver on the top re receiver and transmitter and we're gonna give one access point there done so uh, this cheap deployment because of utilizing uh, laser network and not needing to dig up trenches saves them a lot of money. Now, in terms of potential, they have a lot of potential because in I told you, like there are many, many companies that are just like, I'm going to take the fiber from point A and then I'm going to distribute it. Many people do that. That's normal. It's just that they are going to that end where they're like, okay, I'm going to develop the damn hardware. I'm going to develop the damn software. They call the operating system Dabba OS. So it's quite amazing. So doing that is on a whole different level. And they want to go to such a point where they're like, roads will be laid down or there will be a cable on road. And in this cable, there will be access point integrated in 
the cable. Again, it will be big blocks that you can see, like okay, every one and a half kilometer. The idea is so even if you are driving in a road, you can still have the coverage. So they want to cover the whole, uh, you know, basically uh, city. It's not they are not aiming for only chaiwalas or only uh, coffee shops or only bus stops or things of that nature. That's their starting point. That's how they are making their money right now. And maybe many people have already utilized that, especially auto rickshaw drivers. They are like they do not have the luxury of like you know uh, having a large fiber connection in their home. But this connection is so stable, reliable, cheap enough that they are utilizing it. So they are already making the money and they are want to push it to the next level and they are developing the backbone to do so. And because of their actual understanding of the market, they deployed the system first in 2017. And uh, this yellow box you could see in some uh, places in uh, basically Bangalore. And after a while, every place started to have this. Even banks started to uh, chime in. Even large corporations has like Tata. Tata has a small branch that means Tata Chai. And that Chai divisions has like shops. And those shops started to offer this. So brick by brick, day by day, they started to expand because they have a very thorough understanding of the market and they specified something very interesting because uh, let's say companies like Geo Fiber or Airtel or any fiber ride they have to lay down the fiber beforehand they have to be like I have to lay down the fiber and hope people take the connection they only uh, place the fibers in places where they have hope of that somebody is gonna buy the connection that means high income residentials no problem for those, those people but what happens to low res income people they get left out they're like you can literally have uh, see this in uh, some places where it's like you know these large buildings are there complete Wi-Fi coverage complete uh, basically geo fiber connection you can just f call them up and in less than eight hours they're gonna deliver your fiber connection to your home to your computer but on this side of the road lower income income people they know no sorry sir we cannot distribute it like or they will ask you to spend the money for that fiber link these people because uh, the link by link cost is so cheap they are like just just give me a top of a building like you know or oh, this is the rooftop just give me the access to the rooftop i'm gonna have the laser link and i'm gonna distribute it done so this actual understanding and this fact that they can truly provide cheap internet to you know, people who need it the most, basically low income people, it's uh, kind of amazing. And uh, when I saw this, I start, when I started this uh, presentation, I was like, yeah, no, this might be just a normal thing. But no, they're really digging deep into it. They're like, dude, these people cannot be covered. There are places in Mumbai known as like, you know, Chols and all that. There are hundreds of people there. But because of the low income nature, companies do not want to provide fiber there. It's like they may lay it down once in a while if, if you know, there is enough uh, rich areas nearby. But generally, they do not cover it they can directly cover it because it does not cost them too much and uh, per capita uh, basically per customer they do not have to pay too much it's like one or two rupees that's very low that's like that's low enough that if somebody is only utilizing whatsapp or some payment application uh, they can do like you know one rupee per day that's nothing that's like one seventieth of a dollar so that actual understanding of the market is quite amazing and they have a lot of growth potential like slowly over time because they went and directly went to china and they actually went there and it's like bro we're gonna bring in this many qualcomm chips and you're gonna build the router for us that shows that they are serious about this so growth potential is very amazing however the only thing i could see that could affect their growth is rf interference basically radio frequency interference as more and more people start to use wi-fi uh, even though your router could be very strong you have to understand each mobile phone is trying to talk to the router so let's say 25 people are in one place all of their mobile phone starts to directly communicating that starts to cause an issue best of the best router cannot do much about it because each mobile will may end up interfering with each other and if you utilize basically 5 gigahertz you do not have the range you use 2.5 gigahertz it does not have the channels basically it only has three non over Lapping channel so reality in uh, they are still working they are still developing and because they are developing themselves they might even figure out some uh, timing sequences that allows them to communicate to each mobile phone independently again that is why developing the os uh, like on a deeper level helps them because they are developing the system on chip how the heck it's gonna package how the heck it's gonna be delivered all those things are helping them so other than that minor issue which they may be able to solve or heck that may, may not even be an issue in the first place is just that RF1. Everything else is quite amazing about these people. It's like I'm gonna become an ISP and I'm actually gonna develop the operating system. I'm actually gonna develop the uh, basically uh, Qualcomm based uh, uh, basically Wi-Fi router because there are uh, MediaTek based uh, routers every village. They are very good but they are kind of you know cheap and best kind of solution. Qualcomm routers they are very expensive but again they are best of the best. So these people are directly going for the best of best. Then they have battery backups. Everything was thought of. Any most of them have uh, basically 4G failover in case the uh, fiber link fails. Basically uh, the laser link fails. So they have a lot of potential, a lot of market opportunity and more than enough people are willing to pay uh, like you know these small amounts of money that they need. So let's see how they unfold. Over time they could become a very big deal. 
So this was my presentation on Wi-Fi Dabba. I hope you liked it, learn from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I'd urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me your disappointment, and please leave a comment because I try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free, and as always, thanks for watching.